come and come and time grows short. Run or make your bid. Who'll be first to draw against the silver dollar kid? The silver dollar kid. Travels fast, travels light. Come and win, showdown fight. Showdown fight for a cause that's right. So look the other way. Or stay and make your play. Come and come and say your prayers like all the others did. Where's the man who stand against the silver dollar kid? The silver dollar Sheriff yet? My boys would be very anxious to meet him. I wonder how those killers of yours that acted just once they faced a decent, hard-shooting man who wasn't half paralyzed by their reputation. Is there such a man? Come and come. Give me a drink. Stranger, I'm talking to you. 
talk. Man who's carrying a gun shouldn't have to do too much talking. Talking. This is a town of talkers. Men carry guns and they talk. <laughs> Stranger, do you know who I am? I hear you're a pretty bad guy. That's right. Prove it. Mister, are you actually looking for a fight with me? Look, but not finding one. <laughs> you found your fight, sir. I never refused any man a fair fight. Fair fight? That's right. Okay. You insist upon a fair fight. Fight. fight what is fighting ever 
animal proof. We're not living in the Middle Ages. Shut up. What are we, animals? We're highly civilized. <laughs> Why? I like it. Yellow-bellied Bissell? 
400 straight years of cowardice without a single break. That's why I came out west, to prove that at least one Bissell could be brave. You mean not one Bissell has ever been brave? And my father, Bull Bissell, he was a general in the Civil War. Bull Bissell, what did he do? What did he do? The only battle he was in, they named after him, Bull Run. <laughs> That's why it's been through the years to say the straightest coward. That's why I came out west. I'm their last pope. Oh, Silver Dollar, why don't you go back? No, no. I want to prove that one Bissell can be brave, courageous, heroic. Like being sheriff of Primrose? What? We want to make you sheriff. Are you crazy? Quiet. <laughs> Bissell? Sheriff of the toughest town in the West? You'll be dead in 24 hours. Nonsense. Cowards we may be. Somehow we managed to live a long time. <laughs> How do you like that? A Bissell. Sheriff of Primrose. Three days. The newspaper just come out. Take a look. The town's got a new sheriff. Oh, what do you know? Law and order comes to Primrose. <laughs> Now listen to this, boys. A new era of law and order in Primrose is assured with the naming of a new sheriff. Fletcher Bissell, the third. <laughs> All right, boys, drinks on the house. Here's to the late sheriff of Primrose. Who was he again? Uh, Fletcher Bissell. The third. <laughs> Now you hear this. Until now, Primrose has been a rough and a dangerous place to live in. Now you men are entitled to protection, and I'm here to see that you get it. So I yes. Now, men, there's going to be law and order in Primrose. Now, gentlemen, I've lined up a civic program for Primrose. Together, we can push this thing over the top. First thing, I want you to sign up to be Big Brothers. In my sheriff, Big Brother Club. Now, what does that mean? That means we take the boys and girls of Primrose on hikes. Pageants, picnics, it'll be good for the youngsters, and they are the future of Primrose. <laughs> Next thing on hand, I'm instigating a clean up Primrose campaign. Now, fess up, gentlemen. You've been messy about leaving your horses in the seat. I noticed these little things. Another important item. You're all to join the Sheriff's Arts and Crafts Club. I've arranged for a squaw from the Indian village, but outside of town, she's coming in on Tuesday nights to teach us deep work. <laughs> it's good for you, sharpshooters, keep those pupils dilating. <laughs> Next, we have a very important item. Archery, with the main competition to be held on the 4th of July. The lucky winner to receive one of my silver dollars. Not bad, huh? One of the sheriff's silver dollars. <laughs> How's your mother? My mother? Oh, she'll be proud of you, Bart, on Mother's Day when you bring her a pair of moccasins beaded by your old hands. I expect you there. Tuesday night, you ask for laughing water. Here's another item. Thursday night, behind the general store, we'll all gather for the Glee Club audition. And you, you're my first tenor. Tenor? Don't fight me on this. You're the tenor. Now, I'm going to need a bass voice. I'm hold all this one's right here. You look like a robust type. Now, sing it nice and low and robust. Now, sing. Primrose City's going to grow. Let's go. Primrose. Come on, now. Don't be shy. Let's wait your mouth. Where is it? Don't hide on me. Now, sing it. Primrose City's going to grow. Let's go. Excuse me. Pardon me, but there's a little ceremony that we have to perform, Sheriff Bissell. Sheriff Bissell, oh, you stop that. I'm Fletch. Just plain old Fletch. All right, uh, Fletch. It's, it's just a little ceremony that we perform for every new sheriff. Usually we wait two or three days. But in your case, we're going to make an exception. Oh, Shamon. Shamon, that means charming. <laughs> All right, Ike. It's your turn. Perform the ceremony. All right, Dalton. Cats got your tongue. Oh, don't be shy with me. Don't let this impress you. I'm just plain folks. I can't do it. Your turn, you gotta do it. Look, Nolan, I got a reputation to protect. I killed 32 men, but I give every one of them a fair draw. He won't draw his guns on you, Nolan. Sure he will. He's all steamed up about being sheriff. Just provoke him. He'll draw. Go on. Hello, Sheriff. Sheriff, Sheriff! I'm just plain Fletch. You call me Fletch. I'm calling you a yellow dog, a dirty, crawling skunk. That's what I'm calling you. Now, see here, Dalton. I'm giving you ten seconds to take that back, or you're going to suffer the consequences. I ain't taking none of it back. All right. You ask for this. You're out of the glee club. <laughs> no more tenor for him, you. I want to hear your voice later. Sheriff. Sure. 
You're a disgrace to Primrose. This man's insulted you. And I punished him. Punished him? <laughs> oh, yes. Wait till he finds out that the Glee Club goes on tour singing in Tombstone, Dodge City, and he has to stay home because he's been naughty, naughty, naughty. <laughs> Why don't you drop Mum's ear line? I want to hear these voices, man. I want to hear you sing. <laughs> he's got to be killed. Jake, take him. Uh oh, I got some pride. I ain't gonna be remembered as the man who shot the Silver Dollar Kid. Primrose says he's gonna go. Primrose says when you see Primrose, Primrose, I'll try. Watch it, Primrose says he is gonna go. Primrose, this is bad for you, boy. Out. Primrose says, why don't you follow what I'm telling you? Why don't you? All right, Bart. Looks like you've got to do it again. Bart. I ain't seen Mumsy in 20 years. <laughs> All right, you prima donnas, if your past reputations mean more than your futures, I'll do it myself. I don't care whether he draws or not, he's getting it. Primrose said he's gonna go. Bizzle. Bizzle. <laughs> Fletch. Coming. <laughs> you made fools of us long enough. Now, I don't care whether you go for your guns or not, you're getting it. Draw. Stop. Now, you listen to me. I'm saying this once and once only. If that gun isn't down by the time I count three, yeah. you're out of the Big Brothers. Go get it, you dog. I'm shooting. Don't talk when I'm trying to count. One. Well, stop looking at me like I was dirt. Two. Somebody's got to do it. Three. Where any old clothes were playing run, sheep run. Anything <laughs> bothers you, just send for Fletch. Please, don't cheer. You'll starve the horse. All right, yes. He's got to be killed. He's got to be killed. It's him or it's us. That foul silver dollar kid got to be sheriff of Primrose. Well, the oil's changed, sir. Oh, uh, how much do I owe you? Let's see that. Check your spark plugs? No, no, thanks. Imagine, they couldn't get anybody to kill Sheriff Bissell. That's right. Until they brought in Sam Bass. Sam Bass? You mean the most famous gunman of them all? Must be pretty scarce around here. Nice, you're yeah. awesome. Hi, Sam. Hello, Hi, Sam. 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 You got the slickest guns in the West right here in town. You sent for me? Just who is this silver dollar kid? Oh, look, Sam. Well, just how fast is this guy? Sam, you got nothing to worry about. Just remember one thing when he says draw, don't wait, fire. I haven't had a fight yet where I didn't give a man a chance to go for his gun. Oh, now, Sam, don't ask me why, but you can't wait for him to draw. Fire. Well, just how fast is this silver dollar kid? You're getting paid $10,000 to find out. Just don't wait for him to draw. Perhaps you'd like to join us. Oh, I do hope the registration isn't closed. We're lucky to have her. She's a wonderful teacher. There's such a shortage, you know. <laughs> Hello there, you're Sam Bass. Recognize you from your picture. But how I did is beyond me. I must apologize for the sloppy work our government printing press is doing. <laughs> you see the pictures they send in on Billy the Kid? 
Horrible. Are you the sheriff? No. I never use that word, sheriff. I'm just Fletch. Plain old Fletch. Fletch, are you the silver dollar kid? Oh, that. They used to call me that when I was in action. Well, you're in action now. Draw. Stop. Stop. Look at your hands. My hands? Sam, they're a dead giveaway. I refuse to shoot a man whose hands show me that all he wants is love and understanding. My hands? Oh, come on. Stop kidding, Sam. I know. I know that you're an incipient psycho love depressive. But I give you my word, you will not leave this office. My office? Who's not? Right. <laughs> Sam, there's help on the way. Right now in Vienna, there's this 18-year-old boy, Sigmund Freud. He has the answer. Who? Sigmund Freud. He can help you, Sam. He don't even have to know you. All he'd have to do is look at your hands. And he would know that you're a victim of an over-emotional ego fighting an underdeveloped ist. All this all came out in the debate that Freud had with Spinoza last year in Budapest. Is that a night to remember? Will you ever forget that night? This young scientist, Sigmund Freud, came out with theories that startled the scientific world. Freud was so sure that he had the right path, and he tried to give these knowledges, fighting him all the way. What did Spinoza do? He yelled, Fraud, Freud! In the on words, the inner complex, Fraud, Freud! This is not startle Freud! He said, Sir, have you ever had a complex of hatred in a dream bedlam? Did you ever wake up in the morning and say, what has confused me? What has confused you? Sex! Sex has confused you! And Spinoza, an old man at the time, said, well, perhaps when I was younger. But no, Freud said, and then he came out with theories which would help you, Sam. You of all people. He would know that when you make this threatening gesture with your hands, which seems to say, kill! Kill! You are only saying, Love me. <laughs> Love me. Sam, you're just a lonely, frightened little boy. These are not your guns, Sam. They're your teddy bears. <laughs> teddy bears. If you need help, come and see me. Are you crazy? Who is this guy? Our people call him Chogo Vu Umolko Ag. Now, what does that mean? Man with voice of lion and heart of mouse. Oh, I heard that. Just for that, your tribe cannot have a float in the 4th of July parade. Hmm. Heart of mouse? Could it be your yellow? Oh, Sam, we're not discussing my problem. We're discussing your problem. Why don't you write, Sigmund? The address is 12 of Fliegerpacher Straße, Budapest. Send a self address. Shut up! <laughs> their reputation was too good for those guys. And they want to put an end to it. They want some shooting, they'll get some shooting. No, no, I forbid gunplay and primrose. <laughs> you and your big Indian mouth. <laughs> now look, Sam, you were going to make me a laughing stock, weren't you? Dollar, I absolutely forbid any gunplay. Draw. Drew. I got the dollar. <laughs> well, no one. I'm not in your league with a gun, Sam. Anyone thinks he is? Maybe. Welcome to Primrose. I guess it must be true what we heard about your new sheriff. He must be wonderful. It sure is a nice, quiet town. The Dalton Brothers. Bass. My teddy bear. <laughs> I warned them. I warned them about gunplay and primrose, but they won't listen. They just won't listen. Oh, be sure and wire the federal marshal about that ten thousand dollars reward. We'll use the money for building the new clubhouse. My design. Stucco, red tile, Spanish. Oh, no, no, don't fight me on this. We're going Spanish all the way. Hey! Well, what have we got here? Here I am, girls. This is what you came west for. Oh, yeah, Whistle. Hey, you're all right. These are young'uns? Yep. Good show. Adore me. <laughs> I love Calico. Love it. <laughs>
a minute, folks. Can I have your attention? I have the honor of announcing the engagement of my daughter, Elsie May, to the man that brought law and order to the toughest town in the West and made Primrose a haven for decent folk. Sheriff Fletcher Bissell the third. Now listen, I ain't a talking man. But Elsie May, he is my woman, and anyone who says different will answer to my two friends. My shoot and I. Gates, the sheriff's engaged to be married? That's right. We just announced it. Well, boys, we've got him. Because there's not a man in the West, no matter how yellow he is, who won't stand up if the girl he loves is insulted. Now, Blake, this is your specialty. All right, what do you want, Blake? I'll show you what I want, Sheriff. I want her. A stranger! Well, Sheriff? Well, Sheriff? Gentlemen, remove your hats. You have just witnessed the most beautiful demonstration of true love you'll ever see. True love? Elsie May? Mr. Blake here came in here with so much love in his heart for you, he was willing to face certain death, my gun, just to prove it. I'm engaged to you. You're a lucky girl, Elsie May. I thought you loved me. I do. But compared to him, I got a step aside. <laughs> You're going to let him get away with it? Well, the easiest thing to do would be to gun him down. But I'd rather step aside to be known as the man who snuffed out this great love. Mr. <laughs> Bissell, you're going to regret this to your dying day. Come on. Wait a minute. Don't you speak to me again. Oh! Wait a minute. <laughs> there goes my love. <laughs> Took a mighty brave man to do that, Sheriff. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Leave me with my broken dream. <laughs> Don't cry, Sheriff. Comfort me. Two more families today, and there are waves of them on the way. Boys, every day that yellow coward stays alive, those waves get closer and closer. Now, one of you's got to do it. We still got time. There's still four of you left. Four of the toughest, fastest guns. William, didn't I tell you to stop hanging out with these bums? Oh, now, Elsie May. We're doing the church picnic. If I ever kept you... Elsie May, for peace. Oh, they're dropping like flies. <laughs> this was going to be our town, and who stops us? The yellowest coward ever to show his face in the West. Nick, don't be sorry with us. We're not shooting him. Well, we just couldn't do it. Guy that would shoot that yellow dog would have to be as yellow as him. Say that again. Well, all I said was to shoot that yellow dog. We'd have to find somebody as yellow as he is. That's it. It's a pretty tough order. I think there must be someone. There was a guy down in Tombstone. Now I remember his name. Chicken Finsterwald. Chicken Finsterwald? What did he do? Don't ask me to repeat. Go on. He shot an 84-year-old woman. He shot an 84-year-old woman? In the back. <laughs> back? That I know. When he heard that she'd recovered and was looking for him, he hightailed it out of town and went north. Well, get him! What? Why, any man would shoot an 84-year-old woman in the back and then be afraid to face her in a showdown is our man. Where is he? Find him. Find him? I don't even know what he looks like. Haven't you got a clue? something. Yeah, now I remember. He walks like a duck. Well, get me this chicken that walks
looks like a duck. Go on, get moving. Let's find it. Gentlemen, you got a man here named Chicken Finsterwald? Walks like a duck. <laughs> Mister, as long as they pay their room rent, we don't care how they walk. <laughs> Where are the guests? They're just finishing dinner. They should be out any minute. What are you fellas doing up around here, anyway? Well, we're uh, mining students. Mining students? <laughs> yes. We were working a mine that petered out down in Tombstone. Hey, speaking of Tombstone, you fellas ever run into a Mrs. Hotchkiss? Hotchkiss? Yeah. About 84 years old. Stands about this high. Snow white hair, wears glasses, walks with a cane. Real meat. <laughs> yeah, those old ones can be real hungry. And fast, too. <laughs> Takes a pretty good man to bring him down. Mrs. Hotchkiss. Where? <laughs> no, she ain't here. <laughs> Watch it, will you? Be just like her to put a rubber tip on the end of her cane so I wouldn't hear her tapping up on it. <laughs> What about this, Mrs. Hodgkin? Ain't she that old woman who was shot in the back? Yeah, she was dry ghost in the dark alley. Where is she now? In jail. In jail? Yeah. Oh, 
jail, huh? Yeah, they found out she was the brains of a, of a stagecoach robbing gang. It was a thousand dollars reward for the guy who got her. A thousand dollars? Yep. Yeah, they found the man who claimed he gunned her down and uh, gave him the thousand. But that's my money. <laughs> Your money? Boys, I'm the man who shot Mrs. Hodgkiss. <laughs> I'm Chicken Finster one. <laughs> Now, uh, mister, you, uh, you sure you're not just a bragging? I told you I shot her. Everybody in Tombstone knew it had to be me. I sneaked up behind her in a dark alley, see? And I take the cane from out under her. And I winged her she was going down. <laughs> That's my trademark. How do you like that? And this other guy got the credit for it. And my thousand dollars. Who is he? Fletcher Bissell the third. Fletcher Bissell the third? He's from our hometown, Primrose, Arizona. Is he fast with a gun? Well, I hate to say this, sir, but he's probably the yellowest man in the West. <laughs> Any dark alleys in Primrose? Plenty of them. Saddle my horse. And he shot this little old lady in the back? Yes, Sheriff. Oh, I know we've had our differences, Fletch, but when I heard what had happened to poor Mrs. Hotchkiss here, I brought her all the way down from Tombstone to see justice done. Because that's the kind of a sheriff I think this town has now. Yeah. <laughs> Now, folks, now listen to this. I'm taking a vow. I'm gonna hunt that bomb and chicken fence the wall down. And when I do, I'll shoot him down like a dog, wherever he's hiding. I can take care of him myself. Now, there, there, mother. That's my job. And I promise you, when I hunt him down, and I find him, my two friends here will speak. Sure, if you don't have to hunt him down, he's right here in Primrose. Here in Primrose? He's in my saloon right now. I'll see he doesn't get away. Go get him, Sheriff. Come with me. Well, I'm Who's very busy. I got these posters to oh, get out of. <laughs> so he took my thousand dollars, eh? No man lives that does that. I can't wait till it gets dark. <laughs> you won't have to wait. You're going to be fighting in just a few minutes. In broad daylight? And face to face. Face to face? What are you talking about? That ain't my style. I'm a Batman. I here he comes. When I got here. The sheriff's on the way. What's all this face to face nonsense? Well, that's the way it's got to be. You shoot him in the back and it's murder. They'll form vigilante groups. We'll be all finished here. Here he comes. Get 
me something. Is this the way to kill a man with no evidence? Does he look like the kind of man to shoot a little old lady in the back? Look at those baby blue eyes. <laughs> I will not shoot an innocent man. Innocent? He told us he did it. Yeah, that's right, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Sheriff, you're going to do your yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get you with the... You? Now, you listen to me. Every corporal still in my blood keeps saying, don't fear guns. <laughs> but I got a heart. And my heart tells me, what will we accomplish shooting this man? Outside of satisfying this bloodthirsty old troublemaker. Get on your horse and ride. All right. This man committed a crime. And I've given him a chance to redeem himself. I'm making him my deputy. Why? Why you pushing your deputy? Quiet! I've waited a long time for the right man to come along, and I finally got him. <laughs> you winged her, huh? <laughs> These old ones are tough to get. How did you do it? <laughs> you know how? Oh. I sneaked it behind her, see, and I kicked the cane out from under her, and bang, bang, bang. <laughs> First a blue bead, <laughs> then a red bead. That's it. Now you get me. <laughs> see these? Yeah. That laughing water makes me up a gross. Show him a small profit, but very nice. <laughs> well, this is... Town's getting to be pretty quiet, is it? Yep. All because two men faced each other and found friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Fletch. What is it, Chick? I gotta get something off my chest. Go ahead. I didn't like you at first. If you didn't? No. The reason I didn't draw is because I'm yellow. <laughs> I got something to tell you. What is it, Fletch? I didn't like you at first, either. You didn't? Only reason I didn't draw on you is because I'm yellower than you are. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There ain't nobody yellower than me. I come from the yellowest family that ever lived. Oh, you don't know what you're saying. You must have heard of the Bissell family. The yellow-bellied Bissell. Yeah. Amongst us spinster walls, your family was known as the Lionheart. <laughs> Chicken, I've taken all I'm going to take from you. I'm not going to stand here and have you insinuate my family weren't yellow. That's all we got left. <laughs> Anytime you say that the Bissells are yellower than the Finster Walls, you're a liar. I never drew my gun in anger before, but I'm warning you. I'm going to be in the middle of Main Street at high noon in my shooting clothes. <laughs> now you come ready to apologize, or you'll be ready to drop. You got yourself a fight.
Fletcher Bissell, a silver dollar kid, clean up the toughest town in the old west. And ever since that day, descendants of old Fletcher have been the peace officers here in Primrose. Here's your bill. Seventy-two dollars? That's right. So that was the gimmick. You kept us here all day with that cock and bull story just so you could run up a bill. Oh, now look here, that was the truth. Truth? There never was anybody ever lived as yellow as you say the silver dollar kid was. I'm not paying. Now listen, you. You're paying every cent of that bill or that car ain't moving. Oh, it ain't, huh? Well, we'll see about that. Oh, well, hold it. Now, what's going on here? Get lost, copper! All right, all right. What are you... Oh, these little ones are moving. All right. Bill Monk, 
The notorious Dalton brothers I can take. Doc Henley. Judd McCoy. And of course there was Dick Nolan. He took over Primrose, and if anybody got in his way, there was Black Bart. Murder. Murder? I know, Kathy, as usual, it's a fair fight between two brave men. Isn't that right, gentlemen? Try, you yellow dog, or get... <laughs> Sheriff, gentlemen. This one lasted a whole week. We're not giving up, Nolan. There will be law and order in Primrose. Someone will come and clean out your rattlesnakes so the decent people can settle here. There must be such a man somewhere. Somewhere. Gunmen, gunmen, time grows short. Run our major bid. your bonus for that little job this afternoon. Job? It's a shame to take the money. <laughs> well, gentlemen, did you find a new sheriff yet? My boys would be very anxious to meet him. I wonder how those killers of yours that acted just once, they faced a decent, hard-shooting man who wasn't half paralyzed by their reputation. Is there such a man? Gunmen, gunmen. Give me a drink. Stranger, I'm talking to you.